Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use layered alphabets either in a single framed project or you can put multiple letters in a frame either as a set of four on two rows or to spell out a name in a large photo frame such as this. There are loads of different alphabet sets to choose from in my SVG shop, which is craftwithsarah.com forward slash shop. You can see a few of them on the screen now. However, for this video, I'm using my GNOME alphabet. And the best thing is, you can download this for free for a limited time from craftwithsarah.com forward slash jumpstart. This alphabet, as well as 10 additional layered GNOME SVGs, are available to download for free until the 18th of January as part of the Jumpstart Your Creative Life bundle. It's full of amazing freebies from designers around the world including calligraphy classes, craft room organization, card making, and loads more different types of craft and activities. If you've been planning on trying a new craft for 2023, definitely check it out as there are loads of amazing things in there. But remember, it's only free until the 18th of January. The link again to get the alphabet is craftwithsarah.com forward slash jumpstart. But now let's crack on with showing how to use the designs and how to frame them. Now I actually already did a video on how to make a single letter frame like this one. I'll add the link in the description of this video, but I am just gonna run through the steps quickly in case you haven't seen that one. And if you want to stay just watching this video. If you have seen the other one, then go to this time on the video to skip all of the recap and jump straight into seeing how to use multiple letters on the same project. Let's get started. If you're new to layered alphabets, I recommend starting with just one letter in a frame, like the design you can see on the screen now. I actually did this as part of a previous video, and you can find the full length tutorial for that in the description of this video. But I thought I'd show some really simple steps in this one, just to recap, to um, show how you can line up your layered letter perfectly in the frame um, without accidentally, you know, sticking it a little bit skew if or wonky or closer to one edge than the other. So I've got to this point here where I've measured my frame and made the orange square, which is the size of my frame. And then I've made a couple of extra squares, which are cut from different colors of card to make a nice background for my layered letter. I've then got my letter exactly the size I want to cut. I can check that it's all centered by selecting everything and going align and then center, which it already is, so that's perfect. The hack to get everything lined up is to use the scoring tool. So what I'm gonna do is select everything, which I've already done and press duplicate up here to make a copy. And then I don't need that second orange one, so I'll delete that. And then everything else, I'm going to press select tool up here, go align and then center. So it's now all one on top of the other. And then for my duplicated squares here, I'm gonna change the colors of everything. The duplicated layered design, I'm going to combine and weld to turn it into one layer. Again, if you're not sure why I'm doing any of this, then check the other video where I go into it all in more detail. Let's change the color. Oh, I need to click it first. Change the color just so I know what I'm working with. And also these copied squares. Let's give them a gray color too. All right, so I'm gonna hide these until I'm just left with my original orange and then the biggest of the gray rectangles. Change that into a score line, select them both and attach. Attach is what tells the Cricut that we want it to do the score line on that bit of card. Then I can hide it and do the same with the next square. I actually missed that when I went to hide it. That was confusing me. So let's turn that into a score line, attach them and hide. And then bring on the welded layered letter and your white square, we're gonna do the same again. Turn that, ooh, wrong one, into a score line and attach them. 
And now this is going to score the outline of my letter so that when I come to stick it on, I know exactly where to put it. And that works brilliantly well. Let's just turn this back on. For if you're doing a frame where the very back piece will fit um, and be able to cut on a Cricut. However, what happens if you want to do a whole word with multiple letters on it where your actual frame is way bigger than the Cricut can cut? Well, I'll show you how to do that in the next part of this video. Let's say you want to make a word out of your layered letters where they're all in a row. I'm going to do the word spring using this layered alphabet, which is available in my SVG shop. Again, I'll add the link in the description. I've already purchased a frame for this and I've measured it already so I know how big it's going to be. I'm just going to press select all on these letters and group them and then just hide that group by clicking the eye icon next to them just to get rid of them for now so that we can see to make our template. Go into shapes and choose a square and make this the size of my frame. This is a really big frame and it's actually 24 inches wide. I'm gonna untick the padlock icon by clicking it and then make my frame 24 inches and then the height is seven inches. So this is really, really big. I'm gonna have to zoom out to see it all. And obviously this is too big for the Cricut to cut. So don't worry, we're not actually cutting this with the Cricut, we're just using it as a guide so that we know how big to make the letters. Let's make it uh, white. And then because with frames, you usually find that the very edges kind of get covered up a little bit with the actual frame itself. Um, I wanna make sure my letters don't get too close to the edge. To do that, I'll make a duplicate of this rectangle by pressing the duplicate button. And then my frame, the outside edge doesn't overlap too much. So I think taking one inch off of each side will be plenty. So let's uncheck that box again and make my width 23 and the height six. I'll go to select all, align and then center to put that smaller one exactly in the middle. So now I know when I'm adding my letters, I don't want them to go outside this smaller rectangle Otherwise, they'll be too close to the edges of the frame. Now that we've got the guide rectangles, we can turn the letters back on. So let's click the I next to the group, and here they are. Going to ungroup them by pressing ungroup up here, and then get them kind of so that the letters are roughly in the right order. Spring, okay, they're huge at the moment. So let's drag a box around them. Just gonna drag them all smaller so it's easier to work with. Now, one thing to check is that all of your letters are the same size or the correct size in proportion with each other. So these ones, I would say the letters are all supposed to be the same height because if you look at the design, nothing pokes out over the top or the bottom of the outline of the letters. So in theory, to make it look uniform and neat, they should all be exactly the same height. If your letters have bits of the design that pop out, so maybe if this butterfly was over the edge, you wouldn't be able to make them the same height because you wouldn't have the same little pop out bits on all the letters. So this bit I'm about to do, you should only do if all of your letters do not have anything over the top and bottom. Um, so I'm gonna select them all. So I've got my shift key pressed down on the keyboard and I'm clicking all of those letters. Go into align and then align bottom. Yeah, you can see they're all different heights at the moment. This R is taller than the others. All right, so I'm gonna resize each one individually. Let's go six inches tall. You can't do this with them all selected because then they'll still change in proportion with each other. So you'll still end up with some that are bigger than others. That's why I'm doing this for each individual letter. Okay, so they're now all six inches tall, which is what I want. Let's select them all again. Make sure you don't accidentally select any of the parts of the white when you're clicking this um, rectangle around them. We only want the letters. 
and then I'll go align and align bottom again. And now you see they're all perfect along the top, much neater. And because they're all selected, I can now drag to resize and they'll all resize in proportion with each other. You need to make it so that they all fit inside the um, smaller rectangle. These are a little bit far apart from each other at the moment. Make them closer. And now because I've moved them about, obviously <laughs> they don't line up anymore. So let's select them all with that shift key held down and align, align bottom. Now I can make them bigger all together. You don't want to go outside the smaller rectangle, otherwise it'll be too close to the edge. And actually I'm going to keep mine a little bit of a gap as well, just to make extra sure they're going to fit nicely. That's looking good to me, that size. All my letters are the same size, the same height and they're looking good inside the frame shape. So let's select them all again. I think I just moved that. There we go. Just going to double double check that all lined up along the bottom and then group them all together. Now that they're grouped, I can drag. Oh, actually, before I do that, uh, that P is a little bit close, isn't it? Let's just move him along. It's much easier to get the positioning sorted in design space um, than do it all and realize you don't like it <laughs> once it's cut. Right. There we go. Um, let's just make that a bit of a... Nicer number. Okay. I'm happier with that. <laughs> oh, I just, ah, oh. you know I keep clicking and sort of dragging a little bit with the mouse and moving it. I need to be more careful. Right, align, align bottom just to double make sure. And now I will group it. Okay, <laughs> so now that it's grouped, I can drag a box to select everything and go align center. So that's how it will look when it's exactly in the middle of the frame. Now, if you're anything like me, you're gonna struggle to get these all lined up beautifully in the frame so that they do all have that same gap along the bottom and the top. And also to make sure that your S and your G or whatever letters you're doing at the same distance from the left and the right. There's a magic way that you can um, make it so that they will line up and it's different to what we did the first time when we just had the one letter, the gnome letter. So that one, we could add score lines, but I can't do that this time because my white pieces are too big to put in the Cricut. So what I'm gonna do instead is to create some guide rectangles. I'll zoom in a bit first to make this easier and then go into shapes and choose a square. Uncheck the padlock icon by clicking it and that means that we can drag it a little bit longer and then line it up so that it's going along the edge that's so just touching the very bottom point of your letters and then drag the size so that it's also touching the outer line of your bigger base rectangle. And then I'll make this 11 inches wide. That's how big I can cut on my A4 paper. So I'm gonna to need to make several of these to line them up. How this is gonna work is we're gonna cut these from a random sheet of card, whatever you've got in your scraps that you just wanna use up, it doesn't matter and then position them in the frame. Just place it in, we're not gluing them, sticking them, anything like that. We're just gonna position it along the edge, which means when we come to stick the letters on, we know as long as they touch these guide rectangles, they're all going to be perfectly aligned. We'll need several to make sure they go all the way along. So I'll start it on here and then press duplicate. 
I'll overlap them a bit so that I know when I'm sticking them together. I'm not worried about lining these up too perfectly. I already know I've got the right size. You just need to make sure you've got enough to cover the whole of the frame. So I'm going to need one more. But this one doesn't need to be as long. So I'll uncheck my padlock, change it to five inches wide and put that there. Now it might be that that's enough for you. You might not need the left and right guides, but I like to do them too because I'm so bad at sticking stuff straight. Um, so I'm gonna do a very similar thing on the left and right sides too. Let's duplicate this one and I'll make this another color because then I know really easily which one is gonna be the left and right rectangles and which ones are the bottom ones. And then uncheck the padlock again. And this time we're gonna line it up with the edge of the frame on the right and then make it so that it's just touching the very furthest point of the design. For me, that's the petal on my G. I'll make it the height of the frame um, because it's not very tall, it's only seven inches. So there we go, that's one for the right side. And then I can duplicate it and put it on the left. Now, because we lined up the spring in the middle, this should need to be the same. Yep, perfect. All right, so we're almost there. We just need to hide these base white rectangles. As I said, they're too big for me to cut um, and we were only using them as a guide anyway. So let's hide them by clicking the I next to them. This would all be then ready to cut out. I recommend saving your project before you cut it out, just because we've done quite a lot of work here and we don't want to accidentally lose any of it if uh, design space crashes or closes or anything like that. Um, or if maybe you're not cutting it out straight away, then just save your project. It means you've got it there. You can come back to it another time. There is one extra thing you can do to make absolutely sure that your word is going to fit perfectly into your frame. And that is to try just cutting the bottom layers first and then positioning them just in the frame. You don't need to stick them at this point, but just line them up with your guide rectangles to check that you are perfectly happy with the size. It's much easier to do a test just with those bottom layers and work out you don't like it than to cut out every single little piece and then decide they're too big or too small. To do that, press make it over on the top right. And this separates everything out into the different sizes. So I've got my guide bits here and you can change the paper size if you want to in there. Um, so what I'm going to do when I cut this out is after I have changed all my paper sizes to whatever I want and move things about if I need to. Click continue to connect to the Cricut machine. I can't do that in this video because I don't actually have my Cricut plugged in right now. Um, but what I would do is I would cut out this layer first, this color, which is my guide rectangles in the gray that will go along the bottom. And once that's cut out, I'd then look down until I found my other guide rectangles, which was my purple ones. So I'd cut this out next, and then I would look to find the color of my very bottom letters. For me, that's my solid blue ones, which make up the sky, and then just cut those ones out, and then go over to my frame and check the positioning. Okay, so here are my first few little pieces cut out. I've got all of my guide rectangles to go along the bottom. I've got my guide rectangles to go along the edge and then the very bottom layer of each of my letters. Now this here I have cut from um, a large sheet of green card. It's actually Cricut brand card. It comes in 24 inches wide. Um, and 12 inches tall, so I've just cut it down to seven inches to fit in my frame. Um, so what I did was, I knew the size of the frame, um, and I have checked to make sure that this does fit in, and that's all good. I had to cut that by hand with a paper trimmer, because um, obviously it's too big <laughs> to go in a cricket. 
All right, so let's start getting this assembled just to make sure that I'm happy with the size of all my letters before I crack on cutting out all of the other layers. I've got some washi tape here. You could also use masking tape or just any low tack tape that isn't going to damage any of your cardstock. I'm gonna start by putting the guidelines in place. So I'll take a little bit of this washi tape and I think first, um, I'm just going to add a few little bits to the very bottom of my base rectangle just to make sure it's not going to move around because that could affect how I'm sticking everything else to it. Can you hear the rain? That is torrential. Oh my goodness. I'm really sorry if all you can hear is uh, some really weird noise in the background. It is just awful hair. Of course it's typical that it gets worse the moment I start recording. <laughs> okay so just a few bits on there so I know it's not going to move about and then I can start putting my guides in place and these just line up. Wow the rain. <laughs> These just line up right up against the edge of the green. So whatever your bottom color is, I'm just gonna put another bit of washi tape on to get that into place. Do the same on the other side. And then I've got my rectangles to go along the bottom too. So start with one. That's gonna overlap the guide a little bit on the left and make sure it's right up against the bottom. It's as straight as you can make it. Stick it down a little bit. Just a bit of tape on each side here. And then the next one, I'm gonna overlap it a little bit. Here we go. And there's one more just to get all the way to the edge. Um, I will line it up. It doesn't matter too much, but I'll line it up along where the pink is. So that's all my guides in place. Now I can get my letters. So, S P R I N G. And then I know that my F is going to touch the pink and the grey and the same with the G and remember when I lined it up it was the edge of these flowers that was touching the um, outer rectangle so I know that that's the bit that needs to be on there and then all of the others I'm just going to line up so that they touch my bottom guideline and then move them about left and right until I'm happy with how they're looking. I think that's nice. We've all got a similar gap between them and they're all lining up along that bottom and I know that my left and right gap is going to be the same. So just to do one final check before I cut everything else out, I'm going to washi tape these letters gently, very gently to that base. You don't want to push too hard because you don't want it to accidentally rip the card when you take it off again. Washi tape's pretty good at not ripping card, but I don't want to take any risks. The reason I'm doing this check is that when I take my guidelines off, um, then I'll be able to see the full picture with that border. There we go. Okay, so let's just carefully take these off. I think I might just fold them back on themselves because I will need them to stick the letters on in a minute. Let's fold that back there. 
This just gives you an overall look of everything and then you can really see the edge of your base piece. I am perfectly happy with that. I think that's going to look really, really good. So I'm going to um, put everything else back into Cricut, get it all cut out. And let's just tuck these back over because I'll need them on there to actually stick the letters down properly. So it does take a little bit of time um, just to do all the checks. You don't need to do as many checks as I just did, but I just like to make really, really sure that I'm perfectly happy with how it's gonna look. It's so much easier to change things now. If I wasn't happy, maybe I thought the letters were too big or not big enough, I could go back into design space and change it and all I've really wasted is this piece of blue card. Everything else I can just keep using because I haven't cut it yet. All right, so, um, yeah, what I'm going to do is cut out everything else and then um, come back and we will stick the rest of it together. I've now got everything cut out. You can see all my letters along here. I've stuck these ones together already and it's just the S I've got left to do. But first I'm going to get the very bottom layer done. So this is going to be quite easy. I'm going to glue them to the base. And because everything's already in position and I've got my washi tape down so I'm not going to move anything accidentally, I can just pick these up one at a time to glue them. So I'm peeling off that little bit of washi tape, turn it upside down and add my glue. There we go. You could use your foam squares if you want to add a bit more dimension, but there's lots of dimension in these letters anyway, so um, I'm going to glue it and actually I find gluing a little bit easier just to make sure everything stays exactly where we want it to go. With glue as well, you've got that little bit of wiggle room because you see I needed to uh, just position it a little bit better. And now I'm just going to go all the way along with my letters, one at a time. I'm going slowly and carefully to make sure that everything stays lined up along this bottom bit here so that I'm happy with how it's all looking. For my last letter, my G, I've got to line it up so it's just touching this one and my bottom. Like that. Awesome. All right, so now I can move all of these guidelines out of the way. I don't need them anymore. Be careful not to touch any of the letters whilst the glue is still drying though because you don't want to nudge them out of place. Right, bottom layer done. So now it's time to build up the layers on top. And there are two ways that you can do this. You can either do like what I'm gonna do with the S and build them up directly on what's already there, or you can do it the other way around and stick all of your layers together apart from the bottom one and then just attach them one at a time, either by foam, pads or glue, depending on um, what the design is. My ones are glue, so this little mountain layer gets glued onto the sky, like that one. Um, so it's up to you which way round to do it. I couldn't decide <laughs> which way round would be best, so I thought I'd try both of them. Uh, I'm gonna pick all these up and probably drop them. So my next layer is a glue worm. Let's see which is easier to do. I'm thinking actually sticking them all together and then just putting them on the base will be the easiest way. Um, just because this is so big, otherwise I'm going to be bending and twisting, <laughs> trying to get everything in position. So yeah, I would probably um, do the sticking them all together and then just going on the base one. But I will persevere for this S to get it all finished. 
When you're sticking together foam square layers, I recommend getting some foam in any little thin bits of the outline, like the top of this S. Even if it means cutting your foam square smaller, which is what I've had to do here, so these ones are cut in half. Um, just because if you don't put anything in those spaces, then it's not going to have that solid level behind it. So your 3D effect won't be as dramatic. It is a bit fiddly adding the bits in, especially if it's narrow like mine is because my letters aren't that big really. Um, but it's worth that effort when you see the difference it makes when it's all stuck together. I'm just going through on this one and uh, peeling the tops off of my foam squares to reveal the sticky underneath. There we go. And also, um, as with all layer designs, just make sure your foam doesn't go over the edge or in any gaps. Otherwise, you'll be able to see it when uh, you turn the letter around. So next is uh, my path. Going down on the green. This is two layers, so I've got this one here. And then there's one more to go on top, which is to make up the little cobblestone pattern. I feel like sticking it straight onto the sign like this is more prone to uh, mistakes than doing it separately because if I drip any glue when I'm sticking the layers together like this, it's going to drip onto my base um, and possibly mark it. Whereas when I was sticking them separately <laughs> off screen, which is why you can't even see what I'm doing right now, um, if I spill anything, it would just go onto my work surface, which wouldn't be a problem at all. So I guess that's another reason for sticking them together that way, rather than what I'm doing right at this moment. I like to experiment though with different ways of doing things. You never know, one day might be the experiment that changes everything. <laughs> Next is my last main layer, which is a glue one. Then I've just got the flowers and the butterfly left, which I'm going to put the foam straight on here to make it a little bit easier because these bits are very tiny. And last, but not least, I've got the decorative bits to go on top. I am going to glue these just out of sight because they're very narrow. Actually, you can still just about see. Um, yeah, they're very narrow and I don't want to drip any glue. That's not quite right. Let's turn it around. There we go. No? Yes, that lines up better. Okay, that one done. <laughs> now the rest of them will be easier. They're already stuck. So I just need a good amount of glue on the back here. And then to stick them all down to that bottom layer. All my letters are done, they're stuck. I'm just gonna wait for this to dry completely and then put it in the frame. Everything's now dry and I've taken off the little bits of washi tape that were holding this on my craft table. So let's get it into the frame. Here is the base of my frame. I got this on Amazon. I think I just searched something like long thin frame to find it. And this should go in there. I'm not putting the glass in this frame. Um, I mean, it's not actually glass. It comes with like plastic. <laughs> um, 
But the reason I'm not putting that in is because this isn't actually a shadow box frame, it's just a normal photo frame, so it doesn't have the depth to hold the layered designs if I had the, um, the glass in the front. So I'm leaving it without. I do that quite a lot so that I can use normal photo frames as they generally end up a little bit cheaper than the deep shadow boxes. I was worried at first that maybe they'd get a bit dusty, uh, but they don't seem to. So um, yeah, it's a great tip for uh, just using normal frames. Just take the glass out and then <laughs> it's perfect. I've got my base bit here. So just... Put that in. I hate doing this. <laughs> so fiddly. It's catching on something here. There we go. Fabulous. And now I just need to fold down all of these little tabs. Okay, hey, moment of truth. Ta-da! I'm so happy with how that's turned out. That's really pretty and I just love how stress-free it was to get everything perfectly lined up um, so that it's looking really, really neat. I'm super happy with this and I hope that it's helped you to see how you can use layered alphabets in your craft projects. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to use layered alphabet SVGs. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads more cricket and crafting videos. Thank you for watching. Bye.